thank you so much for being on the show. It's great to have you. Hey, Adam. Perfect. Yeah, no, thanks for having me here. Very excited to be here. Yeah. So before we kick off, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? What's your connection to the industry? Yeah, of course. So I am the senior market manager, senior market manager here for the Little Hotel Your Software. So basically been managing the North and um, North America, Caribbean and Ca- Canada markets uh, and basically oversee all different types of um, hospitality markets, whether that be for bed and breakfast, hotels, kind of, you name it, kind of just really versed within the industry there and then help properties really manage their online rates and distribution and try to help focus on, you know, the different market segments uh, that we have here in the North American market. Yeah. So for those that don't know, Little Hotelier, what what is it? What's the what's the platform? Yeah, of course. So Little Hotelier is really an all-in-one solution for hoteliers and properties to kind of help manage everything from check-in to check-out, right? Um, so it has, you know, the integrated front desk system to help the properties manage their reservations, reporting, housekeeping, just kind of all the daily transactions that hoteliers would need to run the property, um, as well includes the integrated uh, channel manager. So really streamlining the distribution pro- process and helps integrate in all of the different online travel agencies and distribution platforms uh, that the property would need. Uh, as well, one of the most important pieces um, gives properties a direct booking engine so guests can book direct uh, on their property's website commission free. So it's a property management system and a channel manager. Correct. Yeah. So kind of that all in one solution to help keep everything in one place to, to really just streamline their management process and have all the distribution aspects integrated. Yeah. I mean, having that all under one roof, I think, I mean, I know how difficult it is to figure out what your tech stack should be in a hotel. And a lot of times it's already prescribed for you. If you work for a brand or you work for a well-established ownership group, like they've already figured out what all of the different platforms are going to be that are going to plug into the the system. But there's a lot of independent hoteliers out there that it's just overwhelming to figure mm-hmm. out what it is that you need to do is. So it, is it, is it the independent hotelier route that you're really targeting or are you kind of looking at the industry as a whole and going after maybe any type of hotel? So, yeah, it's mainly really those independent hoteliers because we know, especially with a lot of chains, a lot of the larger property groups, they already have kind of a tech staff stack set out for them based on their management chain, whether it be, you know, the Hilton's Heights, et cetera, or some of the other larger groups that already have it set out to have their tech stack already loaded in there. For us, we really focus on those independent properties, some of those hoteliers that maybe are new to the industry or maybe they only own, you know, three to five to seven hotels, but they really don't have any guidance or any front desk system to go to, we provide that so it's an easy to use all in one place platform. So they're not having to go over here for a front desk system and over there for revenue management and and you know how that goes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And without turning this into a sales pitch, because yeah. this is not a sales pitch <laughs> podcast, but I do think it's interesting to have a very simple solution out there for independents that really need help. What's what is the maybe the the handful of benefits when you're talking with prospective clients out there that little hotelier brings to the table that make it easier for these independent hoteliers to do their job? Right. So I really think of it more as kind of like a very simple and easy to use front desk system. I don't like to call it a full on property management system because really we just have user friendliness in mind. Just really help them manage their day to day, make life easier, make the check in process happen within two clicks, have their housekeeping reports all in one page. Just kind of make it easier for these hoteliers to focus on what actually matters at the end of the day, helping bring in revenue, manage their guests communications, things like that, and really just kind of simplify that process. So the system is kind of an afterthought for them that it's just there, manages it, and then they can really focus on every other aspect of the hotel. Yeah. And in this world where staffing is so difficult in hotels right now, I imagine, and I, you know, I I hate to look at, at everything in hotels through that lens, but it's a reality on the ground right now, uh, that anything that could be put in place to make it easier for people to, to do some of those, um, those necessary but behind the scenes clerical tasks is just going to benefit everybody across the board 
Exactly. And with so many hotel owners wearing so many different hats at this time where you have the owner of the hotel even doing housekeeping in certain occasions, right? To where it just kind of frees up that time. So the staff they do have there that is working, it frees up a little bit of their extra time to help deal with other aspects of their job that they wouldn't have time to do if they didn't have all of the aspects of the front desk system, the channel manager, if they didn't have all their bookings integrated, if they wouldn't have those extra hours in the day in order to do everything else that they need to do to run the hotel. Yeah. Okay. So, so in, in terms of uh, switching gears, maybe away from mm-hmm. the, the PMS side of it, more to the channel manager piece, because that's the side I think that's that's really interesting to me. We've always struggled as an industry, certainly in the last like ten years, to figure out how to drive more direct bookings. And it's this. It's this. It's, I, I liken it to like a a puzzle where the pieces are always changing shape. <laughs> so mm-hmm. you never really know like how to put this thing together. Um, what, why, from your perspective, and you talk to a lot of clients out there, I'm sure, and you guys are thought leaders and trying to lead the charge here, especially being a channel manager provider. Why is this, what, why has this historically been so hard? And what are you seeing right now as the industry starts to come back? Yeah, I feel like there's just it's just grown as an industry too. Where I feel like it, the online travel agency boom had occurred, right? And then with that, there's so many other options for for guests to go out there and book, and that different platforms that they're advertised to, where you'll see it in every single day. Now that you're seeing it in commercial, social media ads everywhere, that all these different online travel agencies provide guests so many different platforms to choose from that you find direct bookings kind of fall by the wayside and kind of go out in the afterthought of the property because they're getting all these different deals, right? Push out at them from booking.com and Expedia and then the emergence of meta search platforms and even Google um, has meta platforms now to where it's like direct bookings kind of fall by the wayside um, and don't really get the exposure they need. And with the emergence of these online travel agencies kind of making it so easy for guests to book, um, sometimes they'll forget about the direct bookings because some of these websites aren't really advertising it or don't aren't really giving the responsive and mobile friendliness that they need to where guests can book on a mobile device or on a tablet. Because nowadays everything there everything's happening on the go, and especially you know with the emergence of a lot of the younger travelers hitting the market, a lot of the millennial travelers they want to they want to go on their cell phone, book a room, have it done within you know two three clicks, and it's done. You don't need to talk to anybody, you don't need to reach out. Just kind of want to make it at a fingertips notice, right? Yeah, you're right. You, nobody sits down at their desktop by and large anymore yeah. or laptop to book a hotel. You're you're probably doing it on your phone, standing in line at the grocery store. So it has to be easy to follow, right? Mm-hmm. And it's one thing to say that you you're at the big box hotel in your major urban city center and trying to drive direct bookings that way because you've got name recognition behind your your property and you're in a city that a lot of people are traveling to you've just got you've got density of of guests in in a particular area versus somebody who's got your you know hotel abc in your drive to market that's or even in your urban center i mean it doesn't have to be drive to that nobody would be searching for because they don't know your name they don't really know that you exist and you've got this there's this strange landscape of like you know as that independent hotel do you do you spend marketing dollars against some of these big uh these big hotel companies trying to drive a handful of direct bookings if you're lucky uh, meanwhile, spending potentially thousands of dollars, your customer acquisition cost is really high versus like, do you just spend that money on other things and rely on the OTAs to fill your hotel? It's a, it, I mean, I, I know that there's probably people that are like, yes, always go after direct bookings, but like, you've got to figure out what the best use of your money is. And I'm mm-hmm. not necessarily advocating you should fill your hotel with Expedia guests or booking or whoever, but is it worth going out there and spending marketing dollars to maybe get two or three room nights a year, uh, uh, you know, that are not business travel, like legitimate direct booking leisure guests versus, you know, just relying on OTAs? Yeah, exactly. And it's that funny, funny piece too, to where like, you know, some hoteliers hate online travel agencies um, because they're hating the commissions, but it's one of those things where we always call it a necessary evil, right? 
they're going to take their commissions, they're going to take their revenue, but they're, the great way to look at it is they're only making money if you're making money. The only way they are doing it is they're bringing revenue in the door, right? So it is at a cost, but like you mentioned too, where do you kind of weigh the cost and how do you figure out, all right, if I'm setting up a cost per click model against some of these big guys, how, how am I going to weigh out versus just doing that direct percentage with the online travel agencies? But what a lot of hoteliers don't really understand about these online travel agencies too is where they're bringing in, of course, Expedia bookings or Booking.com bookings, Hotel Tonight, you know, the list goes on. But they also found that we did a report, it's something called the billboard effect within the industry, that one in four uh, guests that actually see you on an online travel agency are going to go direct to your property's website to check you out. And especially in this new post-COVID era that we're in, we've been seeing that more and more common that guests are actually – going direct to properties websites to check out the property to see their COVID guidelines to see their updates on the check-in process on the cancellation policies and then also they've been finding too there's a lot more packages and deals that they're pushing out direct that you can't get via these online travel agencies so with travelers becoming more and more educated it's really crucial to be able to have these different avenues on your on your website to have little pop-ups saying hey here's x percent off for a long stay or these are the different packages we're running and then also show that hey listen we've done our our guidelines we're you know clean we're doing xyz to help bring you in so we can keep you guys here for a longer time right so mm-hmm. it's kind of that way off between having the online travel agencies but also helping them drive direct bookings uh, at the That's, same time i actually that is a really interesting idea where you could also you could almost like piggyback off of the OTA's omnipresence Mm -hmm. (laughs) and if you can build yourself a great you know make sure that your your hotel listing looks incredible and then people go over to your website to check out your hotel and that should look incredible maybe they just book direct with you when you're when they're on your website so they're so the guest is using the OTA more as a search engine than they are a booking tool Exactly. And it kind of leads into that fact, too, because um, especially with travelers being as educated as they are nowadays, I feel like travelers know just every just about everything is the industry. People are shopping around. They're going to between three to five different sites before booking a hotel. So with this, they kind of understand the commission in the back end, but they also understand that typically you can find a good deal booking direct. So if you go there and a promo code pops up or they have a different rate or different package that you're looking for, then there's a way to kind of entice those guests to book direct. So as long as hoteliers are staying on top of their website, making sure their website and booking engine is updated, it's responsive, it's mobile friendly, and you have some different pop-ups and different packages that are, that are going to entice them and bring them in, then not only is it going to help convert those guests without the commission fee, but then you could also kind of bring them in with an added on fee. Whereas they were looking at staying for three nights, but hey, three, stay three nights, get the fourth one free. Now you can kind of get that longer length of stay added in here. And then even then upsell them at checkout, which we've been seeing time and time again with these booking engines to where they'll, you go through the checkout and then now it's like, hey, you know what? We actually have this tour package. We have golf. We got this bottle of wine for half off. You add that in and it's an easy way to take a $500 reservation to a $600, $700 reservation just like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. The 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 idea about increasing capture on your website and what you can do to optimize your site to actually get people to book when they're there. I think the default for so long has been, you know, throw a bed and breakfast package up or throw a you know parking included package. But that's that's not really what where if everybody's doing that, that's not really a strategy. That's, right. that's, you've got to be thinking a little bit deeper into what can you, what can your individual hotel do to create a package that is enticing for people? And you mm-hmm. have to know who the guest is that's coming in, you know, have a really good understanding of maybe where they're coming from and, 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 and also like what else is going on around in the market. But is there, are there any other things that you've seen that hotels can do to just optimize their website to improve those direct bookings i mean especially with you know definitely having it you know the seo in the back end with the search engine optimization and a lot of the keywords um that are coming out nowadays i feel like you need to make sure that you're updating this monthly if not weekly uh just because with how how drastically this hospitality industry is changing and even coming out of covid um just bookings as a whole are changing where these properties are used to kind of forecasting out getting reservations two three months in advance 
are now getting a lot of these last minute reservations and are getting reservations two, three days in advance. Yeah. So the demographic of travelers has truly changed and you've got to figure out the best ways to attract a lot of these last minute and kind of spur of the moment travelers that are coming about. And that's really what you need to focus with your website is kind of do some of those promotions on some of these last minute travelers or even, you know, discounted room nights for you know, these last minute bookings, because of course you don't want to lower the ADR too much. You don't want to get anything down there, but if it's already going to be a lost room night and you know that, Hey, if I could push some of these room nights with some of these different last minute packages, mm -hmm. then some is better than none there. Right. So it's really just about finding the, I guess, kind of balance between optimizing the search engine words, um, and the backend of your website, but then also having a website and a booking engine that is, you know, mobile friendly. And that is a quick, couple click booking process mm -hmm. some of these booking engines take you know seven eight nine ten clicks to get to the end guests tend to fall off you know one of those things if you can just have a couple quick clicks next thing you know you're done with it i mean you see it all the time with um and i kind of compare that to amazon shopping with the hotel industry but it's the same thing where they with a couple clicks you can purchase things and it's done just like that it doesn't give you the time to think about it same thing yeah. with direct bookings you need to have a couple clicks let them do it it's booked and it's done just like that Mobile responsive too. You yes. shouldn't have a desktop version just shrunk down to your screen size. Yeah, because they're, they're squeezing around, they're kind of moving their phone around, <laughs> and next thing you know, it's so hard to do, and they get frustrated, and then they're just going to go to booking.com or Expedia because they've done it before, and they know it's easy to do on their mobile device. That's a good point. You know, the, the SEO piece, I remember when I used to work in Washington, D.C., This I feel like this was the start of when we really started to see this, where there were hotels, that, and if anybody knows D.C., um, there were hotels that were nowhere near DuPont Circle that would say that they were in DuPont Circle in their in their like secondary line of their hotel name. Same for Georgetown, you know, they were nowhere near Georgetown, but it would be in their kind of their byline of the hotel. And it was a way for people at the time, if they were searching DuPont Circle hotels or Georgetown hotels, your property would show up in the search. But that's become far more sophisticated as time has gone on now. And those you've got to be looking more at long tail um keywords instead of just like hotels in seattle you'll you if you're an independent hotel unless you're spending a boatload of money you're not going to show up and probably not even until the third or fourth page so when you talk about and this is an area that you know me personally i've kind of struggled to get my head around when you talk about seo optimization for hotels a keyword optimization what is it that you mean fundamentally and actionably what is it that a hotel should do yeah, and with that, there's been, and I'd say Google is probably one of the biggest players and the biggest presence in this, because just like you mentioned, if a hotel is on the second, third page of, of Google, they might as well not exist, because, you know, how often are you searching for a hotel you're going to scroll through and go to the last, second, third mm -hmm. page? You're just not going to do it, so. Sorry to catch up. Save goes if you're on an OTA. Yep. Right? Yeah. Okay, sorry. No, no, you're good. Yeah, no, I mean, same exact concept, right? You're going to scroll through the first five or ten options, then those are what you're going to use for what you want to look for. So having um, a website, not only that's HTTPS certified, which is kind of the new updated version where it's showing it's a safe, it's a secure site. Uh, but then not only that, it's been updated in the fact to where uh, really SEO not only is with keywords, but also how often you update the website. So if you have a website that you haven't updated in even three years, mm -hmm. then the, it's actually going to lower your rankings with SEO. So not only is it the specific keywords, specific types of travelers and the demographic of travelers you're looking to bring in, you also need to make sure you're updating the site, have high def, uh, high, high def photos, have updated uh, tabs on your website, all these different things with updated. And now Google has even kind of brought in a whole segment for COVID type of keywords, mm -hmm. just showing that they're, you know, doing the cleaning, showing that they're COVID safe and responsible and having just those little tiny add-ons too with the new age, quote unquote, keywords, right, is really going to help boost their uh, SEO ranking. But then having updated high def images is also a keyword, key part of that. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to think too, because I feel like there's, it just really depends on per per hotel, right, in the different areas, but having a direct integration and having your Google account set up to where you can have, you know, all of the different uh, keywords, star ratings, uh, things nearby, everything within your Google account set up, because Google nowadays has even kind of got into the Meta platform and became an online travel agency of their own. 
Well, yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that, that I think gets missed in this, it, it, with Google in particular, is uh, reviews. And everybody was doing TripAdvisor reviews forever, and then Google just made this quiet push into hotel reviews. And now not only are your rev the quality of your reviews and your ranking, but your response rate and how engaged you are as a hotel with your reviews also plays into that. So now you've got everything that you just talked about plus guest reviews mm -hmm. that you need to stay on top of. There's just, it seems like, it almost feels like a never ending list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's a few, we could even start just going, if we really thought about it, we could just start adding about three, four, five other things oh to that God, list. Oh my God, let's not overwhelm people. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Um, something that came up uh, in our pre-conversation that I, I want to dive into, and it, maybe this is a short question. Um, is there benefit in going after some of these social media platforms to try to drive bookings into your hotel? Or is that just like wasted marketing dollars? So, and, and luckily too, there's a way to go into these uh, social media platforms without actually having to spend any marketing dollars too, which also goes into the direct booking platform to where we're finding a lot more booking engines now are compatible with Facebook, can add the link to Instagram. Um, and I know, for example, too, Facebook bookings have also been a big thing to where basically properties are able to add on their booking engine onto Facebook, put it on their mm -hmm put it on their page. So when guests go there and stay and they like it and they promote it and these, you know, different suggested pages come up. Now the hotels are getting suggested to come up and you have the link to your booking engine right there on Facebook and guests are able to book directly off of Facebook. So that's one of those things mm -hmm. too, where they're not even having to use paid social dollars um, to, in order to promote that. That's just something they can easily have on their site to help promote another avenue of direct bookings. Oh, interesting. So not necessarily buying, you know, in, uh, in newsfeed ads, mm -hmm. it's really just about having a good presence on these social platforms for your hotels. And it makes sure that you, you build them out as if you were like, put as much care and attention to your profile there as you do your website. And Thank then you. people, you know, if you're engaged, people will find you and then they book that way. Okay. Exactly. And I mean, of course, to your point too, there's a way because I feel like as far as, you know, the cost per click model goes or paid social, I'd say paid social media is probably the highest conversion and highest revenue producers for um, hotels rather than paying cost per click models, trying to compete on Google against a lot of, you know, the booking.coms, the Expedias of the world who have millions of dollars worth of worth loaded in those cost per clicks. So they can kind of compete with you. That money's lost revenue to them at the end of the day, whereas some of these hoteliers can't afford to have a dollar per click. And there's a majority of the time they're not even going to get, there's no guarantee of a reservation. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. If you, yeah, dollar per click and you, you know, you, it's, it's, you've got like 10,000 impressions and maybe you get one reservation out of it. It's really kind of a pointless endeavor. Yeah, exactly. And there's so many other ways to spend your marketing dollars that I feel like those cost per click models wouldn't, aren't really the most beneficial there. So if they can basically focus on a little bit more, especially um, the Facebook, the Instagram, because you're seeing nowadays, especially a lot of um, different travelers going there and everyone's tagging where they're traveling to, um, you know, the, and then the hotels are now, you know, of course you have those specific keywords going back to the SEO, you have those specific keywords you can add onto your Instagram accounts, onto your Facebook book accounts, onto all the different ones that's where now when they're going there through their for you page, or if they're just kind of scrolling through their feed, next thing you know, you, that hotel can pop up, they see it. And then just like we mentioned, last minute travel is up. The majority of travelers right now are booking two to three days in advance. So yeah. if you can kind of scroll through and they can find yourself on your feed, then they can go ahead and book that. But then not only is it last minute travel, a lot of people um, like yourself, like myself, we're working from home now, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not going in the office. And I'm sure there's millions of others just like us who are sitting at home working from home. So if I'm sitting at my house or my apartment, why don't I go ahead and sit at a nice condo with a beach view and work and then enjoy the nightlife afterwards? Yeah. 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 The nomad tra or the nomad <laughs> worker. Yeah, yeah. That's, which is, you know, a big, a big trend right now. I and mean, then that, that's the proliferation of Airbnb and vacation rentals. It, certainly during the pandemic has been largely caused by that. But mm -hmm. anyway, that's a whole other show, <laughs> <laughs> but it's an interesting, but it, it's worth talking about, I think it, at a high level, because that is a trend that we're starting. We're starting to really uh, feel the effects of in the industry especially as hotels start to come back. Are you seeing any other trends out there as you're talking with, with 
clients and different parts of the world? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, the last minute travel, I'd say, is the big one to where, you know, trying to do, especially revenue managers, trying to forecast out instead of being able to forecast quarters in advance, they're forecasting a month, if not a couple of weeks in advance. So that's obviously your the, forecasting is you're doing your schedule. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Like, all right, let's forecasting every morning so you can see which reservations came in for the next two days. Yeah. yeah. Um, but other than that, we're also seeing uh, an emergence of, I guess a larger demographic of travelers too now to where there's been a lot more emergence of, I guess, the millennial traveler who is really like, like we just talked about looking to book and go work from other places, work from other locations. And with a lot of shortened work weeks now where people can take Fridays off and it'll extend, you know, the nice Thursday to Sunday trip, then it's very easy to do, um, to, to kind of go and, and travel that way. But as far as different trends within the industry go, I'd say surprisingly, um, you know, direct bookings have been up since COVID. So we kind of ran, um, we did a changing traveler report back uh, when the when the p- pandemic first started, um, six months in, and then we just did one a few months ago now, what are we, almost 18 months in? Mm-hmm. Just kind of over how travelers are feeling, if they're looking to, uh, you know, if the travel was just postponed or if maybe they were just not going to travel completely. And there's within even from six months, to the one now, um, the data has changed completely to where not only people are taking the trips that they've postponed, but now they're looking to travel now more than ever because of, you know, those last 12 months that they've missed out on. So trying to be able to uh, kind of get out and attract those travelers is going to be the biggest thing is bringing in. I guess being prepared for the flow of travel because I've spoken with so many hotels, especially now in July in the peak summer season that all of a sudden out of nowhere, June hit and then July and now they're sitting at 80, 90 percent occupancy and they're just understaffed, don't have enough. They don't have their software set up, so they're not able to kind of manage everything in one place and they don't have the staff to kind of offset for all the travel that kind of almost more or less came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know that, that was something that we were talking about all through the pandemic. Is like this is going to end, and it, I mean it's easy to Monday morning quarterback this, but if the pandemic was going to end. Use this slow time to get yourself in a good position to deal with it when things came back, and then all of a sudden it was like literally opening up a fire hose. <laughs> things came back, and hotels are just basically holding on to a runaway train at this point, trying to keep it on the tracks. Yeah, um, and it's you know it it will slow down. If you, you know, when school's back in, I mean, you maybe have like six more weeks of this, but <laughs> when school <laughs> when school's back in, things will get to be a little bit more manageable. Mm-hmm. So there's a light at the end of the tunnel. But when you're in the weeds like this, yeah, it's really hard to just to be strategic. When yeah. You just have to come in and like, I got 100 in and 100 out today and three housekeepers called off and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> a site visit and I got this. Like, yeah, it's there's a lot going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, are there any... Any ways that hotels, I mean, aside from what we did, because I just, I just listed like all of the barriers <laughs> that, <laughs> and then there's many others, but is there anything that <clears throat> in that context, because I think it's important to understand the reality on the ground too. Like it's very easy to sit here and say, oh, just do X, Y, and Z and everything's going to be great. Meanwhile, there's like no hours in the day and no, no people around to do the things. Yeah. But in that context, is there anything that you've seen that some of the best hotels that you're working with are doing to respond to, to some of these trends that are going on right now. And, and again, you know, maybe to be able to capture an extra couple of, of direct bookings or create great packages or whatever those things are. And I know we've covered a lot of things on the show today, but is, is there anything, anything to kind of wrap all that up with? Yeah, there's a couple pieces we have there. So I guess starting out with capturing a few more of those direct bookings is getting into a lot of these meta platforms. Um, and I'd say the newest emergence and the most popular one is Google Meta or you know Google Hotel Ads to where you know when you're searching for a hotel and on the right-hand side of Google, you're going to see Booking.com, Rates, Expedia, TripAdvisor, etc. Now properties can have their direct booking engine right up there next to all the big guys. So they can be able to put you know Booking.com, Expedia, and your property's direct website right there to kind of help entice them and show that, hey, like we're here listed next to these guys. So with simple click on Google, you can have your direct booking engine listed and then they can go directly to your website to see the packages, see the offers and bring in those reservations. Oh, interesting. That's huge. That's huge. That's like the kayak of, uh, you know, but you can actually be listed. 
Exactly. And there's yeah. so many models that Google has to where they can either, um, you know, you can, you can either, they just charge a commission or there's a no commission model. So there's a couple ways they can ease into it, especially if a hotel doesn't have a lot of marketing dollars or doesn't want to pay another website commission. They can still list with Google Meta, pay minimal, if not any commission to Google and still have your website listed up there next to the big guys, booking.com, Expedia, Hotel Tonight, Airbnb, you know, and be able to drive those direct bookings and simply take a Away the bookings from those sites and bring it on direct. And that's something you guys can help with, I'm sure. Yes, exactly. That's definitely something that um, that we're able to, to help with and kind of integrate in because it, like, it goes back to like we were mentioning at the beginning is make sure your booking engine is optimized. Make sure it can integrate with you know every platform, not only mobile, tablet, laptop, but then also all the different platforms of the meta search, of the Googles of the world, of Facebook, of all these different platforms, make sure your booking engine can be on as many different places as possible because the more visibility you have, the more likelihood you do have for those direct bookings. You got a fish in every lake. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you keep using fishing metaphors. I don't know why, because I'm not. E I don't even fish, but it just it just, it just makes sense. Uh, it's in my brain. Anyway, Anthony, this was uh, amazing. Thank you for sharing so many great tips. Um, if anybody wants to learn more about you, learn more about Little Hotelier, or just get more information about the platform, where should they go? Yeah, of course. Um, LittleHotelier.com, L-I-T-T-L-E-H-O-T-E-L-I-E-R.com. Um, they can always reach out to myself direct, uh, anthony.lazera at sitemindercom um, So feel free to reach out to myself, reach out to our Little Hotelier team. We'll be able to kind of help point you in the right direction and, and get you any of the information that you need. Awesome. Everything will be linked in the show notes if people want to find it. Perfect. Good stuff. All right, Anthony, thanks again for being on the show. Perfect, Adam. Thanks for having me. Yeah.